you have done in the past. The moment you step into the body of Christ, you are now a child of God. The law can no longer hold you bound because now you are now under the covering of God. Wrong association can be death. I said wrong association can make us to lose what God has given to us. Like these people, they were innocent people just traveling in the ship on the boat with, with Jonah. And look at what happened to them. The Bible says that as the storm was blowing, as the storm was raging, What else are we still going through? Because he said, it is finished. Amen. There will be joy in the morning. Yeah, there will be joy in the morning. Oh, child of God, cry no more. There will be joy in the morning. This was the song I woke up with this morning. Because I kind of put myself in the place of the disciples. That morning where they were weeping and crying, Oh, our master. He died three days ago. But there will be joy in the morning. There will be joy in the morning. Oh, child of God, you better cry no more. There will be joy in the morning. No, I want you to tell the person by your side. Oh, there will be joy in the morning. Yeah. serious tell the person by you there there will be joy in the morning there is joy already here there will be joy in the morning oh child of god oh child of god clean your eyes weep no more there will be joy in the morning if only somebody told the disciples that there will be joy share your word. I ask the Lord you will speak to us, talk to us in a language that we understand. In Jesus mighty name we pray. Amen. One day a Christian brother was accused of a crime he didn't commit. He was in Europe, one of these countries, Spain I think it was. Accused of a crime he didn't commit. And he was repatriated back to his homeland. You know if you are repatriated from a country. No matter your nationality. You have no right to come back to the country for I think a number of years. I don't know how they do it. And it's like your record is spoiled. No matter where you. It, it, sometimes it even affects your entering into other countries. Because you were repatriated. Sent back. So when this guy got back home. To his home country. He had already spent so much years, so many years in the foreign land where he was. He had done a lot of businesses. He had worked. He had, he had houses. His business, properties and cars. Now he's been repatriated from this very country. He thought to himself, so all these things that I labored for many years, I have just lost all of them. He began to wonder. I think this heat is too, too, too much at the moment. If we can reduce it a bit. He began to wonder, how do I get all this back? After I've spent more than half of my youth 
working for this same thing that I have been thrown away from. Oh, he thought to himself, what do I do? He began to pray. The pastor where he was joined him and said, okay, let us pray. But a human mind would think, of what use is he praying? You have already repatriated. Just wait until the time passes. Let's say 10 years or 20 years. But this guy thought, this is all my life. This is the reason why I went. I have worked it. Uh, how do I lose all of this property? And the pastor told him, don't worry. There's nothing that God cannot do. So the pastor asked the guy, what do you really want God to do? He said he wants to be able to travel back. Hey, but all evidence shows that you cannot travel back. So they prayed and believed God. The guy was on a three-day fasting. He went, took his passport, the same passport he was sent back home with. After they had prayed and asked the Lord to intervene, He went to the, but while he traveled, he went to the passport control and they checked him. You know, when you are not sure of something, he was there and he was looking at their faces because by law, he cannot travel through that place. It's, his name is already on the system that he cannot pass through the border. He can never cross into this country. But they allowed him pass. In fact, the system said that he had never been to this country before that it was his first time the same passport he was sent back home with he had been living in this very country for many years but the system said he had never been in fact in the very same country he was sent back from he's back there still doing the business and everything the system said he had never been in the country before the old record the old bad record that he had was wiped away miraculously i'm not sure but by nothing else but the blood of jesus now this is one thing that jesus came to do in the book of colossians chapter 2 verse 14 blotting out the handwriting of ordinances that was against us which was contrary to us and took it out of the way nailing it to his cross amplified version says having cancelled and blotted out and wiped away the handwriting of the note with its legal decrees and demand which was in force and stood against us this note with its regulations, decrees and demands, he set aside and cleared completely out of our way by nailing it to the cross. Let's analyze this scripture very well. Blotting out means to, when you have written, you cancel. Yeah? Can, can I see the scripture please? Amen. It says, having cancelled and blotted out, wiped away the handwriting of the note. It's like when you have made a note, you, don't, you, you have made a mistake, you want to cancel it. He cancelled it. All the things that stood against us, he had cancelled it. But when he looked at it, you know that sometimes when you have written something and you have made a cancellation, sometimes somebody can still see what you have written. In the, so what Jesus did on the cross of Calvary, he cancelled the things that would have stood against us, the laws that we broke. He cancelled it, but he discovered that this thing will still be seen. Look at what happened. He says he cleared it completely. He took it away and nailed it to the cross. He took it away and nailed it to the cross. One would imagine that the death of Jesus did it all. We would think that the death of Jesus should have paid it all. Like we see, he nailed it to the cross. But there is one more step that was required for us not to be guilty of the crime that we committed. For us not to be guilty, for us not to be charged for the crime that we did. 
You say, oh, I didn't commit crime. Bible says that when we were born, we were all sinners. Every man has seen and fallen short of the glory of God. We all have seen. Praise the Lord. He declared in the book of John chapter 19 verse 30, it is finished. So why did he still need to rise? Why did he need to rise? Why did he need to raise from the dead? Even if he didn't have to rise, his nailing all our guilt to the cross was sufficient. Praise the Lord. One reason he had to rise is seen in the book of Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Let's quickly open that scripture. Romans 4, 25. If you are there, say I'm there. If you are not there, say wait for me. Ah, there's no response for wait for me. There's no response for I'm there. Okay. If you are not there, say wait for me. Romans 4 verse 25. It says who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again. For what? For our justification. So he was delivered. He was betrayed and put to death because of our misdeeds and was raised to secure our justification. Now we read previously in the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. It says he died and he nailed our sins, our misdeeds to the cross. That is what the scripture is also saying. It said, but he was raised for our justification. So the reason why Jesus rose from the dead is to make us justified. Tell your neighbor, I am justified. I am justified. Okay, just in case the English grammar is too much and you don't understand what justification means. Justification, it goes like the word, just as if it never happened. Justification, just as if it didn't happen. Oh, you were, the, you were a thief before. Now, just as if I am no, I wasn't a thief. You say, oh, I was a fornicator. Just as if I didn't do that. You say, oh, I used to lie. Just as if it didn't happen. That is what justification means. So when Jesus rose from the dead, although he nailed all the things you did to the cross, People may still be able to remember that you used to be like this. People may still be able to remember that this is how you were. But when Jesus rose from the dead, it made you justified just as if it never happened. Tell your neighbor, I am justified. Tell your neighbor again, I am justified. So what did Jesus come to, just, to, to, to nail to the cross and Bring us justification. The handwriting, the things, the law that we broke, the things that we did in the past. That's why I begin to wonder when many Christians are saying, oh, it was because when I did this, when I was an unbeliever, that's why this thing is happening to me. You have never really come to the full understanding of who, of what Jesus did. Because if you know what Jesus did, he came to make it look as if it did not happen. So if you committed murder before you became a child of God, the moment you become a child of God, that thing is passed away. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. So it doesn't matter what you have done in the past. The moment you step into the body of Christ, you are now a child of God. The law can no longer hold you bound because now you are now under the covering of God. Amen. So the handwriting, what are handwritings? Handwriting are facts written against you by the enemy. They are bills written in the separate house of the, in the, in the Senate house or the house of reps. How do you call it here? It's house of parliament. Oh, thank you. It's the house of parliament. Those bills and laws that have been passed, they are handwriting that are written against you by the enemy. Oh, that she did this when she was, how many years old? She did that when she was, the, you know, these are bills written. Now, you know, before they pass any law, there's first of all a motion in the House of Parliament. And those motions are spoken words. Oh, we want this to happen, this to happen. It doesn't become a law. It goes to be a bill. So it's now written down. And then 
After much deliberation, it then becomes a law. It's now put in practice. Before the death of Jesus, there were so many laws in place against us. But when Jesus came, he died to replace these laws. Now that you are born again, Jesus has now been set as the advocate of our lives. Like um, sister mentioned during the Sunday school. He is now our advocate. He's now the one speaking on behalf of us. Whereas God is the judge. He would have judged us over the rubbish that we did. But because Jesus is always there saying, oh Lord please. This is the one who I shed my blood for. He's now advocating for us. Whereas the devil is the accuser. He keeps pointing hand. Oh she did that. She didn't pay her tithe. She, she, she killed such a person. She lied. She stole. The devil is always accusing. The devil is always pointing accusing fingers. But for the fact that Jesus went to the cross, he already paid it all. So he's always saying to the father, Oh father, remember, this same one you are about to, you are about to punish. I paid it all for her. I paid it all for him. So Jesus is ever pleading on behalf of us. Amen. Tell your neighbor again, I am justified. As a child of God, you are no longer to be living in the old law. What you should be doing is looking into the scriptures and investigating what is the new law that governs my new country. Because you are no longer in the old land where you used to be. You are now in a new environment. The environment, the kingdom of God. Now that you are born again, you have to begin to investigate what is the new law that governs me. So the Bible says that I am, I am strong. I am not weak. I am rich, not poor. By the stripes of Jesus, I am made whole. You have to begin to declare the new law that governs your new kingdom. Praise the Lord. Now sometimes the devil, when Jesus is trying to, to defend you, oh, this one I paid the price for, the devil comes and says, oh, point of order. But this is the time you have to get, get to know the scriptures. And then you reply, oh, in article Romans, section 8, subsection 33, it says, who shall, who shall lay a charge to God's elect? Who shall lay a charge to God's elect? So when the devil comes to check our files, he finds nothing because Jesus took it away. Remember that scripture? He nailed it to the cross. Amen. He nailed it to the cross. Sometimes it looks as though the accuser has found our home. He is after us. We experience different trials in our life. Different sort of problems. And we are thinking, oh, the devil, he followed me here again. He's affecting me. He's affecting doing this in my life. But you know, in another part of the law, the scripture says, having translated us from the kingdom of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of light. So our address is changed. Jesus paid it all. So you begin to ask yourself, oh, this pastor has said all of these things. But why is it that I'm still experiencing these things? Bible says that my people perish. What is the reason? For lack of knowledge. Ignorance. Ignoramus. As <laughs> my people perish. Bible says, my, some translations say my people are gone into captivity. That means they use their legs to enter bondage because of ignorance. Praise the Lord. What is ignorance? Ignorance is the strength of the oppressor over the oppressed. It's the strength. Have you wondered why certain times you are treated differently from other people? The reason is not because you are not good. The reason is because you do not know the law. You do not know the law. Ignorance. Is the strength of the oppressor over the oppressed. If you are two people and the police is trying to, you are, let's, let's assume you are in the, in the, in the border and they are, you are, they are tossing you to and fro and then you just say, excuse me, ah, because, well, you are talking from boldness from the fact that you understand that this thing shouldn't be. But if you, and then they immediately say, oh, sorry, madam, and they give you back whatever they are supposed to give you. 
And then you are another one who is by the line there. And you are, is everything okay? You know, they keep you longer. You stay longer because they know that you, you don't know the law. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Ignorance is the strength of the oppressor over the oppressed. Now, if you look at what happened, there's a story of a man of in, back in our country. In one state, the government was being nasty. The government was misbehaving, doing a lot of nasty things. They were not repairing roads. They were not doing anything. So one day, the, uni the students of the university decided to go on a riot. They said, let us go and release the prisoners. Let's go and release them because they, they, are, they are better off than our government. So they made the riot and went to the prison. And began to, re they opened the prison and released the prisoners. You won't believe what happened. People ran out and left these two men inside. They said, ah, bros, we will not go. Let's stay. This is a trap. These people have set trap for us because they, they, well, we will not go out now. They will catch us. You know, the, the ones who ran out were free forever. These two stayed inside and said, ah, no, we are not going. No. Ah, when my sentence is about to finish, why, why will you go? They, they're just deceiving us. They were ignorant of what was going on. That those guys have already paid the price. They just opened the gate up for them to be free. But they were there, ignorance. Ah, no, we are not going. No. Ah, this is just a trick. This is just a trick. And they, they went on like that. They remained there in the prison. When the riot was over, the prison guard came and locked, and locked the gate again. They remained in captivity. The reason why many of us, our lives look as though Jesus has not paid the price. It's nothing else but for the fact of ignorance. Praise the Lord. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Finally, I will read a story. Years ago, two brothers were living in an oriental city. The younger brother hung around with his bad companions. And day and night the power of evil drew him more and more onto an abyss. That would finally destroy his life. The older brother however was considerate towards other people. Loving God and following the steps and following the teachings of the Bible. His brother's careless lifestyle deeply worried him. And he often tried to talk to him seriously. In tears he would plead with him to turn from his wicked ways. And he showed him a way out of the grip of his bad habits. Unfortunately, his younger brother showed no sign of regret. He totally ignored all the good advice and held on to his shameful lifestyle. His older brother kept on praying for him, waiting for God's intervention. Late one night, there was a loud knock at the door. And the elder brother, the, the, uh, the loud knock at the door of the elder brother. He quickly opened and surprised, he pulled his younger brother inside. What's wrong, he asked, altogether pale, trembling, and with blood-stained clothes. His brother gasped, help me, hide me. They are after me, look at the blood. I have killed the man. Oh no, it all happened so quickly. There was no time to waste, as the older brother desperately sought a way out for the hopeless situation. In great love for his brother, an idea suddenly formed in his mind. Without comment, he changed the blood-stained clothes of his brother and put them on himself, giving him his own clean shirt to wear. He pushed him into a room and locked the door. At the same time, there was another knock at the door and the police stormed inside. Do not try to get out of it, they said. All of the tracks are leading to this house. Look at these blood-stained clothes. You are arrested. They grabbed him, bound his hands and pulled him along to throw him into prison. He did not defend himself, not even saying a word. The man was sent to prison straight away. The next morning, he was ordered to a hearing. He did not defend himself, but kept repeating the words, I know that I must die because of this crime. And the sooner, the better. After a few days, he was taken to court. The judges listened to the accusers. They considered the police report and the bloodstained clothes of the prisoner. They asked the accused man, do you want to say anything to justify yourself? No, he said firmly, lowering his head so that his innocent look would not betray him. Mm. 
there, were, there was con convincing evi evidence which made the judges pronounce a death sentence on him. The evening before his execution, he asked the director of the prison to grant him one last wish. He wanted to write one last letter and asked the director to forward it unopened to the address, addressee after his death. The director studied the calm and peaceful face of the condemned man. A bright and heavenly radiance shone from his eyes. There was no doubt about his honesty and so he, his wish was granted. Late that evening, the prisoner handed the sealed envelope to the warden to be delivered. Then he was left to himself for the last hours of his life. In the morning, he was taken to the place of execution. After his death, a messenger was sent to deliver the sealed letter. A man, pale with fear, received the letter nervously. After a long stare at it, he broke the seal and moaning in pain, he read slowly, Tomorrow, I will die for you wearing your clothes and you may you live in righteousness and holiness wearing my clothes and remembering me the criminal was shaken to the very depth of his heart he read the words again they seemed unbelievable to him i will die for you this word weighed on his conscience like an enormous burden this cannot be true he reasoned as fast as he could, he ran to the prison in the hope of saving his brother. There he asked to speak to the director urgently and showed him his brother's letter. The director was deeply moved by the words, I will die for you. Suddenly, he realized that the calm and quiet behavior of the condemned man and his strange last wish all made sense. The director was speechless and sent the letter to the judges in charge. They questioned the murderer who confessed everything, his past life, the murder, his escape, his cowardly science, silence. In his terrible guilt, he finally cried, kill me, I plead with you, let me die. But there was nothing more to settle. The words of the victim, I will die for you, has settled it all. He expressed the awesome power of brotherly love. The judge looked at the true culprit with peculiar sympathy and deeply moved. And he said, the sentence was already passed. The guilt was paid for. Jesus already paid it all. He died in our place. He took the sin in our place. So what is it that troubles us? This guy wanted to even die. But they told him, no, the sentence was already passed. He already paid it all. Go. Go from here. He already paid it all. I'm the one who committed the murder. No. The sentence is already passed. I already, he already paid it all. Oh, I'm the one who did that crime. Kill me, please. No. You are free. Go from here. He already paid it all. The debt was already paid. His brother's wish while he was dying was that the, son, the, the brother, the younger brother will continue to wear his clothes. The cloth of righteousness. Jesus exchanged the cloth of righteousness for a cloth of sin. The Bible says that the sin of mankind was placed upon him. Now this is, this is likin to what Jesus did. He paid the price for us. Took the sin away. He died in our place. I would say that the wages of sin is death. We are the ones who were supposed to die. But he said today. I would die for you. If you are here today. And you are not sure. If you are living. You are wearing the same clothes. That Jesus asked you to wear. The clothes of righteousness. Maybe you are wearing the clothes. But just a little blood stain is on it. Just want us to bow our heads and examine our hearts this morning. Say Lord. I want to put on the clothes of righteousness. Search me Lord. Is there any way that I've got my robe? My shirt stained. Wash me. Begin to examine yourself. And if you are watching me online. 
and you probably don't know Jesus. Maybe you are here in, in the auditorium and you don't know Jesus. You have never met him before. You have never accepted him before. Maybe he has spoken. You have heard the word being preached to you several times. But like the younger brother, you never wanted to pay attention. You didn't think that this kind of message was for you. And you abandoned the message of the cross. Jesus already paid it all. Maybe you have come to the point you say, Lord, I'm tired of this type of life. I want to give my life back to you. I want to give my life back to you. Have mercy. If you want to make this decision today, justification doesn't come for everyone. The justification that we talked about doesn't come for everybody. It comes for those who accept that Jesus is Lord. Immediately you are, you accept that fact. You are then translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of life. And then in the kingdom of life, you are now justified. And all your old ways is just as if it never happened. If you are here or watching me online and you want to say, Lord, I want you to do that for me. I want to accept you as my Lord and my Savior. Just place your hand on your chest and say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I surrender. I come to you as my Lord and my Savior. I'm sorry for the ways, the things that I did that were unpleasing in your eyes. I'm sorry for abandoning you. From today, I choose to follow you. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Come into my life. Make me whole. Make me new. Change my address from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of light. I want to follow you for the rest of my days. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. If you have just said that prayer, you're not a child of God. And God is very pleased with you. The Bible says that there's joy over one's soul that comes to Christ. So the Lord is really pleased with you. I encourage you to find a Bible-believing church where you can attend. And for those of us who are here, I want us to take our relationship with God very seriously because he paid the price. And how can it be told that someone died in our place, yet we show no love for him, yet we show no dedication. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name. And so, Father, we thank you because you are risen. We thank you, Father, because you, you sent your son to die on the cross and he rose again. Oh, Lord Jesus, we appreciate you for all the things that you did on the cross. We thank you, Father. I ask, oh God, that the advantages and the benefits of your dying and rising will be evident in our life from this day onwards. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Let somebody shout hallelujah. Amen.